about fear and how we need to learn to overcome it. Really just take a chance and give ourselves the best, you know, opportunities we can in life. That's what life's about. If you just stay comfortable, like that's, that's not good for anyone. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So if you're new here, this is a mental health lifestyle channel where we do all kinds of things like review and summarize podcasts, books, go over different YouTube channels that could help us out where if we can learn anything, that would be ideal. Where people just give us motivation, inspiration, hope, encouragement, love. Those are all things I am here for and I love to promote. So if you want to be a part of our community, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I upload every Friday. Okay, so <clears throat> we are here with another book review slash summary. And if you do not know who Gabrielle Bernstein is, I'm going to need you to Google her because she's amazing. She loves to inspire other people. She helps you along your spiritual journey. Whatever you need help with, she's got your back. And speaking of, her book that I'm reviewing and summarizing today is called The Universe Has Your Back, which I'm pretty sure a lot of people have already read, but I was late to the party. You know, not everybody is on time. And uh, it's a good one. So we're going to go for it. This book, it'll, uh, it'll inspire you for sure. One of her quotes that I wrote down first is, To be free, we must acknowledge our resistance. Mm. I, I love this one. Because she repeats herself a lot in this book about fear and how we need to learn to overcome it and really just take a chance and give ourselves the best you know opportunities we can in life that's what life's about if you just stay comfortable like that's that's not good for anyone you need to learn to branch out and step out of the box so chapter one we deny the love of the universe and choose the fear of the world. Your happiness should be an expression of joy that elevates the world. And when we surrender our will to the power of the universe, we, we receive miracles. And projection is perception. Um, I love everything about that. So for this one, she's saying, if you are projecting, if you are putting out there, um, I can't achieve anything, I can't do anything. That is because it is your perception. It's the way you view things. If you told yourself, I am a, I am a leader and nothing can stop me and I will achieve my goals. If that was your attitude, if that was your attitude, and that's what you were putting out into the world, then that's your perception. So it's like a good reminder on whatever you put out, basically. That's how you view things and that's your perception. If you change your perception, then you change your projection. I love it. And of course, this is gonna sound, well, a lot of stuff on my channel is going to sound almost repetitive because it is a self-help channel it is a mental health channel it is make sure you check in with yourself to make sure you're doing okay and this is the steps on how to do that so just be aware and a follow-up quote with that is energy flows where your attention goes she says you see the world you have made but you don't see yourself as the image maker. Mm. I love that one. Let me say it again. You see the world you have made. You have made. But you don't see yourself as the image maker. Because you made 
the world you're living in. If you don't like your job, go get a new job. If you don't like where you live, go try to find somewhere else to live. You have to set goals for what you want and you, you have to learn to fix things you're not happy with. If you're not happy with it, then make a goal list and learn to fix it because you are the maker of your world. And she says you have to find your hidden power and she gives an example. What is the horror movie you've been playing? What is the positive movie? And reconnect yourself to your power. So take a step back and look at the negatives, look at the positives, and reconnect to your power. If your power is something simple like being kind to everyone you come in contact with, Get more in touch with that. Just because you had a negative day or a negative moment, a negative day or a negative moment, reconnect with your power. Everybody is special in their own way and we all need to start embracing it. And she says, you, look at me, I'm already jumping the gun. She says, your presence is your power. Again, everybody is unique. We should embrace it. Chapter two, we are actively choosing the world we perceive. And I love that. I, again, the book itself kind of repeats itself in certain situations because everything is connected, I personally believe. And especially with the message that she's trying to communicate, a lot of it is connected. So we, we have the power to choose our perception. We can choose to believe if, I don't know, if you believe in the zodiac signs and all that stuff with the rising moon and the sun and if you have detailed traits because you were born at this time or whatever the case is, you have the power to choose if you believe in that or not. And that was just one example that came to the top of my head. And my favorite part about this book is she names universal lessons throughout the book. So the first one is in chapter two, and it is, we are not responsible for what our eyes are seeing. We are responsible for how we perceive what we are seeing. I love this. I love this. I love this. I absolutely love this. It makes a lot of sense, right? So let's say, um, okay, let's say you're a student, right? Okay, you're in high school and you see your parent, guardian, whoever talking with your teacher and they're very close. They look like they're trying to be quiet. Um, one, they're going back and forth with serious faces. It just looks like you're in trouble, right? You're like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be in trouble. My teacher's talking to my mom or my dad or my aunt, my uncle, whoever is your guardian. I'm gonna be in trouble, right? Next thing you know, your mom or guardian, whoever's walking towards you, and they're saying, wow, your teacher had such good things to say about your grades and this and that. She thinks we should put you in a different program because you're ahead of your class right but internally you perceived it you looked at it like it was bad right i just think that's amazing it just should remind us to always always take a second and think like what is really happening should i wait should i come up with different scenarios let me not assume i mean there's a bunch of different variables. I love that one. The second universal lesson is the universe will always conspire to lead you towards solutions of the highest good when you open up to receive them. You would be surprised how many people are scared to um, receive a little bit of happiness. A little bit of sprinkle. Third universal lesson. The universe is our classroom and when we accept our role as a happy learner, life gets groovy. Her choice of words are so cute. I just love them. And if you didn't know, she also has several other books. And when I say several, I mean a lot. 
And universal lesson number four in chapter two is when we choose the universe as our teacher, we can see with the eyes of love. So this is just so adorable. This book is so adorable. I love it. Um, so in the book, she talks about like, it's okay if you don't believe in God, but try to believe in the universe because the universe is made up of energy. And when we push happiness and good vibrations out, we receive good vibrations, you know, law of attraction. If you've heard of it, usually most people have, I'm not going to go into detail. And next she goes into six steps on how to call on the universe for guidance. Step one, you ask for guidance and you try to replace fear with love. Because again, a lot of people are scared to receive something good coming their way, some happiness and some love, some warmth instead of, you know, coldness. And step two, practice the holy instant surrendering your fear. And that means you have to shift your perception almost because a lot of people have a really old perception, right? Perception, maybe they were taught or maybe they're hanging around the wrong people who might not have the best perception. You want to try to view things positively, right? Like nobody likes a Debbie Downer, right? Am I worried? And step three is a fast comeback. Remember to come back to love and she calls it the comeback weight, which is cute. I like that one. So in this book, she also talks about believing in God and the universe. And she says she's a little bit more spiritual and she opens up to the universe and the gods. So, I mean, again, everybody believes in their own thing, which is totally okay. But if you can listen to other people's perspectives with an open mind, then you can read this book. If you can't, then I don't know, it might be a little bit difficult for you, but okay. Universal lesson number five. Our happiness is a direct reflection of how quickly we restore our fear back to love. The goal is to not believe in fear, but learn through the fear or learn through the love. So it's again, it's a whole learning experience. Universal lesson number six. The universe is always responding to the energy behind your beliefs. Step number four, put out what you want to receive. And step five, create a purpose statement. So her example was, I am ready to learn through love. So whatever you're trying to achieve is what you need to list. Number six is my favorite. You are the dreamer of your dream. Uh, Love it, love it, love it. So after that, she then talks about creating visions of the world that you want to see. Again, creating the world because you are the world maker. Well, not the world, but creating your world. Because when you open your mind and your heart to new perceptions, new ways of thinking, it could lead you to happiness. And everybody has the right to be happy. Chapter three. Universal lesson number one, the world is your classroom and people are your lessons and assignments. People are your lessons and your assignments. Okay, just because I love giving examples, I try to on this channel. That way everybody has an idea. Not everybody learns and listens the same way, you know? Comprehension, it's a big thing. Okay, so an example for this. Say you and your friend just graduated college and you are going for fashion. And right after you graduate, you have offers coming in. If she gives you, I say you're two girls, right? And your girl, best friend, and you got your offers, right? Say fashion school, somebody wants to take you in right after college and you now have that degree. So fair game, right? And she has a degree in whatever she has a degree in and she's not getting accepted anywhere or getting hired anywhere, right? But you, you have this amazing offer. You can't wait to tell her about it. 
and she starts saying somewhat negative things to you, that is your lesson. Take that as a lesson. Whether you guys have been friends for 10 years, five years, or one year, doesn't matter how long the friendship is. People change all the time. People get jealous all the time. And if she can't handle it and she starts getting upset and she's actually starting to put you down, well, take that as a lesson. The world is your classroom and people are your lessons, okay? I had to learn that the hard way. Don't get too attached, right? Because it could happen. And then after this, she talks about seven steps for showing up to your assignments. And I will go over some of them, but again, I won't go over all of them because if you're new here, I don't go over everything about my book review or summaries or podcast review or summaries because again, I want you to go support the creator, author, whoever. Um, so some of them is honor your feelings because if you feel it, then you can get past it. And another one is place your faith in the universe. And I'll tell you the last one, number seven, is welcome healing. Because I just feel like most people aren't up for facing what is hurting them or what is troubling them. You know, you have to learn to heal. It's important. And she ends chapter three on the third universal lesson for this chapter. Freedom from the past is available to you when you show up for the assignment for the present. I love that. Just training yourself. Oh my God. Amazing. Okay. Chapter number four is your energy is your greatest source of power. Love me some good energy. If you do not have good energy, bye sis the door is over to the left i don't want nothing to do with you i am so persistent on protecting my energy now because i used to be going through it okay i used to be extremely highly sensitive which i still am a little bit sensitive but i've grown a lot and i used to let people which i still do sometimes but before it was like extremely bad so I guess I just changed my level of it, but I used to let people affect my feelings, my day, my good energy. Mm -mm. Nope, we're not doing that anymore. Next universal lesson. When you experience someone's true presence, you are reminded of your own. You know, it's kind of like a little bit of a reality check. So when you experience someone's true presence, you are reminded of your own, whether it's a good quality or a bad quality. Experiencing other people, especially if they're different, if they're truly positive or really bubbly, or if they're extremely negative, you tend to look at yourself and you're like, hmm, okay, you know, have you ever done that? If you're not doing that, maybe you should try. Maybe you're not looking into yourself as much. So after this, she talks about aligning yourself with love. Oh, I'm just listening to her, because again, um, again, I listen to most of my books on Audible because I get free credit, so it's like free books per month. Yep, so I do that. And um, when you just listen to it, it just sounds so soothing. She sounds so light. The book is amazing. You gotta read it. Anyways, align with love. <laughs> she names six steps. And um, these ones I think I will go over in detail because it is a good one. So let's start with step number one. Get out of the way. <laughs> Sometimes you just get in your own way and it could be a mess, you know? So step number two, calibrate your energy by meditating. So shifting your energy and again, shifting your perception. That is very important. Step number three is set empowering intentions. Step number four, understand the power of joy. Step five, lean towards joy and you will be led. And step number six, celebrate the support and love from the universe. 
and then she gives you some stuff to answer so I will go ahead and put them on the screen real fast power of editing some good stuff in this book okay some hidden gems chapter number five first universal lesson is the universe works fast when you're having fun so she goes into this whole thing about have fun in life you know life is too short you never know how much time you have number two limitless guidance is available to you the universe is an abundant flow of positive powerful energy so we should be taking advantage of that number three <laughs> reconnecting with your power begins with realizing that you lost it so then she goes into steps on how to reconnect with the universe step number one be determined to see with love so you have to identify your low vibration story step number two let your feelings navigate your path so be unapologetic about how you want to feel because she also says side note she also says don't um you can't act like everything is perfect and not she's not trying to say everything will be perfect but you can choose the happiness versus the sadness or the angry or just anything negative, really. Step number three, ask the universe for a sign. Step number four, turn it over to the universe and be patient. And then she gives you a prayer to say out loud, thank you universe for offering me clarity. Step number five is welcome creative possibilities because realistically you never know what could happen. What could stem from what project? What could stem from what habit? Like you never know what could be. This book, tell me, it's a good one. Chapter six, your obstacles can be detours in the right direction. This is another great reminder that I absolutely love because sometimes you could be going through something and it's hard to remember in that moment, oh wait, this obstacle could be something beautiful in my life that's about to happen. And I just need to be patient with myself and see where this goes. See what lessons I can learn. Like, it's a lot, you know? So your obstacles, again, could be detours in the right direction. Universal lesson one. The universe will do for you which you cannot do for yourself. And then she goes into the three steps because she asks, are you blocking your alignment from the universe? And step number one is, is the word should blocking your flow? Well, I should be the best mom out there. I should have a million followers by now. Is that word should blocking your alignment? Step number two, Pray to surrender your shoulds and see your obstacle with love instead of fear. Step number three, turn it over and allow the universe to take over. Because yes, we do have some control, but we don't have all the control. There's no way to control everything. You are never going to have full and absolute control over everything. So again, another great reminder. Chapter seven. Hard work, passion, and commitment can bring greatness to your life's passion. And basically your purpose, whatever your purpose and your passion is, all those traits contribute. Her quote is, those who are certain of the outcome can afford to wait and wait without anxiety. And it's a passage from a course in her miracles program. So she encourages you to take on this new power and to learn to use it. The power is a new perspective. Universal lesson number one for this chapter. The path to certainty requires a profound desire to be free from fear. You'd be surprised how many people are so scared. Again. <laughs> so from this she talks about when something happens out of our control, like losing a loved one, 
that we can start to get scared and feel out of control. And so the lessons she goes over will strengthen your fear towards certainty again. Step number one, get ready. So for example, are you ready to let go of the past experiences that led you to doubt? Step number two, think it, feel it, and believe it, which I've seen on Pinterest actually as a um, affirmation. So that's wild. Whew, got goosebumps. Um, anyway, so for example, your thoughts and visions create your reality. Mm. Step three, get into dialogue with the universe and write out on paper whatever you are feeling. Step number four, co-create with the universe and keep the images of what you want present in your mind and picture what it would be like to live in that world. So kind of like when you hear about people riding around houses, riding around houses. <laughs> oh, that's a new one. Way to go, Holly. Oh, when people ride around in neighborhoods looking at houses um, and they picture themselves in their dream house, you know, stuff like that. And she says, you have to create the life you've always wanted. Stop praying for an outcome and instead pray for the highest good for all and let faith be your new God. Chapter eight talks about how she wants you to support and embrace the signs from the universe. So when you get one, you have to embrace it. And she goes over some steps for that. So step number one is understand that miracles are natural. And if miracles are natural, then everybody deserves a miracle every now and then. Let your faith and belief lead you to synchronicity so your light can shine bright so you can honor your true connection to the universe. Step number two, look for love and expect miracles. Focus your attention on the love and joy and then thank the universe. And step number three, practice non-interference and be receptive to guidance that comes your way. Step number four, heighten your faith. You need to create a faith statement and that's by asking yourself, what would your life be like if you were being guided? And your statement should move you and create high energy within yourself. And step number five, commit to your statement and repeat it to yourself because time is irrelevant when you are working miracles. That's her quote. You following along okay? Everybody stand with me? Okay, chapter number nine. What you judge in others is a reflection of what you judge in yourself. Universal lesson number one for this chapter. You must be willing to shed old patterns and embrace a new way of being. And then she lists some steps on how to release judgment. And I'm just going to give you the last step to this, which is step number four. And it is meditation for oneness. Our one desire is to be happy and free of what oneness is, okay? So then she goes over the mantra that she gives you and she tells you to be kind to one another. And the mantra she gives you is really cool. I wrote it down, I'm not gonna list it because again, go support her. So chapter 10, universal lesson one, you are one with the universe, so make love your priority and surrender into your passion. For example, maybe your parents are telling you, hey, don't go to fashion school because that's, got, that's not gonna make you a lot of money. That's not gonna be stable. Whatever their reason is, they're telling you not to do that. Well, you know, sorry parents, sorry guardians, don't listen to them. Follow your passion. If you believe in yourself, then you should try it. And then she goes over steps on how to deepen your faith for the love of the universe. So step one, a prayer for truth. Step two, meditation to connect with the universe. Step three, truth is your name. Step four, walk the path of humility. 
And this whole chapter is a lot about tapping in and getting closer to your consciousness. It's a good one. You definitely need to read this book. Chapter 11. The universal lesson number one in this chapter is goals overshadow guidance. Mm. So she talks about surrendering to hope and faith. The need to control is sneaky and our ego thinks we know what we need when we need it. And surrender your plans and control to the universe and let the universe do its magic by and she lists these particular steps step one take your hands off the steering wheel step two turn over time by embracing the present moment love is a decision so choose love step three surrender your goals and step four turn it over to your holy triangle which is faith love and charity Chapter 12 talks about her commitment for you and how she wants to spread love and be love. And she talks about steps on how to be the light. Step number one, wake up. For example, don't ignore what's happening in the world. Step two, remember where your true power lies. For example, the key to your power is love and lead with compassion. Step three, the peace of love is shining through you now. Step four, become an instrument of love. For example, ask yourself, how would you use me? Towards the end of this chapter, my favorite part is at the end because you can hear her voice start to crack and almost shake as she is talking about this. And she says, choose love and spread light and just know the universe has your back ah! so cute i love listening to people or talking to people that have passion about their passion you can tell in their voice you can tell the way they talk you can tell in their demeanor you can tell in their eyes they have passion for their passion it's a beautiful thing to see and this book I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it was life-changing but there is a bunch of life-changing moments in the book and again that's nothing against her because I've read I think two or three of her books and you know they are very powerful and very life-changing but for me and my personal journey, this one wasn't my absolute favorite. But I would still recommend it. 10 out of 10. Definitely go check it out. It's amazing. It's a really good book. So, yeah. Um, okay. That reason was kind of weird. So, yeah. Go um, to your local bookstore. See if they have it. Again, it is The Universe Has Your Back by Gabrielle Bernstein and check out on Audible if you have Audible I love Audible they sponsor a lot of people for a reason because it is amazing and if you like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up and don't forget to like comment share and subscribe and I'll see you next week bye guys just gonna have to roll with it so um yeah hopefully this audio is okay join the fun put a little sprinkle on it who doesn't love sprinkles <laughs> because this mama needs coverage hun okay i don't think i have to set this cc cream from elf we deny the love of the universe and choose fear over the world we deny the love of the universe and we fear we choose the fear of the world so again kind of like the projection the projection <laughs> already a couple minutes in I can't even talk I don't understand it side note yes I'm drinking water with a pineapple flavoring packet.
because it is day 26, day 27 on no caffeine, no alcohol, no coffee, no coffee. You heard that? No caffeine. You heard that part? The no alcohol is easy, but, uh, <laughs> the no coffee, <laughs> that's a little bit difficult. Uh, I absolutely love this. I did a little too much blush, huh? <laughs> it's kind of cute though, right? Am I blushing from within? Look at me. What am I doing? <laughs> um, wait, did I even finish explaining? Our happiness is a direct reflection. Did I say that right? Direct? Direct? How you say that? Tomato? Tomato? Anyone? <laughs> Crap, it's six. Six. It's six, not five. Scratch it. Extremely negative. It makes you look negative. How did I just say that? Did I say that really country? If they're extreme... <laughs> Lord. <laughs> I listen in listening in what what am what is happening the universe picks up on what you put out oh what is happening oh universal lesson just kidding i just cannot get it together uh okay when we lean on faith of the universe well, i'm gonna get it together i promise <laughs> this is fun see what i mean See what I mean? Just gotta have fun with whatever you like to have fun with. Don't let nobody else tell you otherwise. <laughs> there goes my fine lines. Look, look, look. You can see it. I know you can. I hate them. All right, we can't take a lot of time on this thumbnail because my storage is running out. Hopefully one of those work. Bye.